Although the Navy Z-2D Advanced Hawkeye Command and Control aircraft will be out of production in four years, they are developing a strategy to keep the plane in service for at least another 30 years. Captain Peter Robio, who is in charge of the Airborne Command and Control Systems Program Office at Navair PMA-231, says that upgrades to the avionics in the cockpit and improvements to mission systems, communication capabilities, and cybersecurity will make sure that the eyes of the fleet continue to work well after 2040. Northrop Grumman makes the E-2D Hawkeye, which is an updated version of the E-2C Hawkeye, which is tactical battle management, airborne early warning, and command and control aircraft that can be based on a carrier. Overall, our 2021 goal is to maintain all three type model series with a significant focus on improving mission-capable and completely mission-capable E-2D aircraft, Arobio said on August 3 at the Navy League's annual Sea Airspace Conference outside Washington, D.C. Arobio explained that changes to the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye are made slowly over four years through a Delta system software setup. At the moment, the Navy is using DSSC version 3, and version 3.1 is set to come out later this year. Rob Bio says that the E-2D will meet Department of Defense DoD, rules for cybersecurity by 2021. This will be possible because DSSC 3.1 will include parts of the Joint Tactical Radio System JTRS, and Link-16. It makes it possible to link, coordinate, share, and evaluate the effects of targeting information at the tactical leading edge, Orobio said. Every two years, a new DSSC comes out. The fourth version, which will be released in the fiscal year 2023, will have better data integration, GPS, and radar technology. Squadrons for flight test and evaluation. Orobio said that the software package is currently being tested on a VX-20 and a VX-1 as part of the beta testing phase. After two years, DSSC-5 will have upgrades that are essential to the carrier strike group's ability to fight in an A2-AD environment, he said. He said that most of the specifics of the capabilities could not be discussed at the meeting because of their classified nature. He explained that the current difficulties were because the E-2D is being asked to do more than initially anticipated and that the new construction would reset the antiquated, obsolete architecture behind them. The sixth software update bundle will allow communication between the Naval Operational Architecture and the Joint All-Domain Command and Control JADC2, system. Orobio confirmed that the E-2D is still manufactured today. The interior is fresh and clean, and it even has that new aircraft odor. Nonetheless, the cockpit's architecture, algorithms, and components were developed in 2005, when flip phones were all the rage. The E-2D's mission computer and displays must be protected from the enemy's cyber powers. We can't take that chance anymore, Orobio said. This is part of the HECTR Hawkeye Cockpit Tech Refresh program, which updates Hawkeye's cockpit technology and adds features like a heads-up monitor for pilots. Orobio noted that the new theater combat ID and mission computer displays are built on an open systems framework that should make future software upgrade packages easier to develop and implement. From concept to market on an E2D takes four to five years, which is too lengthy for the company's budget. Like the Magic Carpet Precision Landing Mode for F-A18E-FS and F-35CS, the Navy is thinking about putting an improved landing mode ILM, on the E2D to help it land on carriers. Adding ILM to the E2 is harder because the plane doesn't have fly-by-wire and its radar, which Arobio says looks like a mushroom, is shaped funny. Orobio says that with aerial refueling, future E-2D flights could last up to 9 hours. This would be especially helpful for tired crews trying to land on a carrier at night or in bad weather. Though ILM isn't strictly necessary at the moment, it's quickly becoming a top priority for many ship operators. There are 48 E-2Ds in use right now, and another four are set to arrive by the end of 2021. By July 1, 2021, it is expected that all 22 of these airplanes will be fully mission-ready at all times. 
Orobio said that this goal was met and surpassed in February, which was five months earlier than planned. Intermediate level maneuvers can be done by mission capable E2DS, such as flying between two points or landing on and taking off from an aircraft carrier. However, they can't do advanced maneuvers, such as aerial early warning. According to Orobio, fully mission capable is the key to victory in a battle. This platform cannot perform its duties unless all 11 of its core components are working properly. By September 1st, there must be 22 planes in the fleet that can do all missions at any time. The number of ships that are fully mission competent has doubled in just two years, he said. The Navy has been using an average of 29 operational E-2DS per month since February. Orobio figured that nine fleet squadrons and one fleet preparation squadron, each with five planes, could be made with 42 E-2DS. Orobio said that by the fiscal year 2027, five of those units would have completed the switch from E-2CS to DS. Two of the groups use E-2DS that can be refueled in midair. To be retired at the end of fiscal 2026 are the Navy's 26 E-2C Hawkeyes, which are used exclusively for training. The Navy has requested 86 E-2D planes, but only 78 Hawkeyes will be deployed by 2025 due to budget constraints. Under a second multi-year deal, three of the nine E-2DS are already on their way to the Japanese Self-Defense Force. In its arsenal, Japan already has four Hawkeyes. In December, France signed a letter of intent for the acquisition of three E-2DS with a delivery date in the fiscal year 2027. Orobio also revealed that talks are underway with Taiwan and Egypt about fielding the platform. There are currently four nations that use the E-2C.